Connection or just Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Arjuna Vacham Sanyasam Karmanam Krishna Punar Yogam Sha Sham Sese Yashreya Eta Yore Kam Tanme Bruhi Sunishitam. Was it in English? Yes, let's see where's Anil Prabhu. Is he unmuted? Oh, he disappeared. Oh, Anil Prabhu, you need to unmute yourself, please. Anil Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay. Prabhu, you can read the English for text one, please. One second. Uh, uh, just uh, game in. Uh, have a couple of minutes, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, go ahead. Yeah. I should uh, uh, read the English uh, translation of uh, text one of chapter five. Yes, that's correct. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Arjun said, O oh Krishna, first of all, you ask me to renounce work, and then again you recommend work with devotion. Now, will you kindly tell me? Definitely, which one of the two is more beneficial? Hare Krishna. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Sanyasa Karma Yoga Sha Nihishriya Sakarau Bhau Tayostu Karma Sanyasa Karma Yoga Vishishyate Hare Krishna. The Personality of Godhead replied, the renunciation of work and the work in devotion are both good for liberation. But of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. Hare Krishna. Geya sanitya sanyasi yo nadvishti na kankshiti nirdvanvo yamahabaho sukham bandahat pramuchiti. Hare Krishna. One who neither hates nor desires the fruit of his activity is known to be always renounced. Such a person, free from all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated. O oh, mighty Arm Darjuna, Hare Krishna. Sankhya Yoga Pridahagpala Pravadanti Napandita Ekam Apyastita Samyak Hare Krishna, only the ignorant speak of devotional service, karma yoga, as being different from the analytical study of material world, Sankhya. Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the result of both. Hare Krishna. Yat sankhya prapyate sthanam tat yogar abhigamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha ya pashyate sapashyate. Hare Krishna, one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore see analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level sees things as they are. Hare Krishna. Sanyasas to Mahapagho Nugham Aptam Ayogata Yoga Yuktam Muniram Brahma Nachirena Dekachetim. Hare Krishna. Merely renouncing all activities, yet not engaging in devotional service of the Lord, cannot make one happy. But Thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay. Hare Krishna. 
Yoga Yukto Vishudhatma Vijitatma Jitendriya Sarva Bhutatma Bhutatma Karvan Apina Lipyate Hare Krishna, one who works in devotion, who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never engaged, in, sorry, never entangled. Hari Krishna, a person in the divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping and breathing, always knows within himself that he is actually, he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, or opening or closing his eyes, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged with the objects and that he is aloof from them. Hare Krishna. Brahmania dahasya karmani sankam tyakta karotiya ivyatena sapapena panmapataram evam bhasa. Hare Krishna, one who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results into the Supreme Lord, is unaffected, in, unaffected by sinful actions as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. Hare Krishna. Kayena manasa pudhya kevailar indriyar api Yogina karma korvante sangam yaktvatma shudhaye. Hare Krishna. The yogis abandoning attachment act with body, mind, intelligence, and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification. Hare Krishna. Yukta karma phalam yaktva shantim apnote naishtikim. A yukta kama karena phale sakto nebadhyate. Hare Krishna, the steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace with, before, because he offers the result of all activities to me, whereas a person who is not union with the divine, who is greedy for, his, for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. Hare Krishna. Sarva karmani manasa sanyasya ste sukham vashe navadvare pure dehi neva karvana karayan. Hare Krishna. When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working nor causing work to be done. Hare Krishna. Na katri tvam na karmani lokasya srejati prabhu na karma pala sam yogam sambhava so pravartate. Hare Krishna. The embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of action. All this is enacted by the mode of material nature. Hare Krishna. Nadate ka sechit papam na cheva sukritam vibho agyane navritam gyanam tenamu hyante jantavam. Hare Krishna. Nor does the Supreme Lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activities, embodied beings, However, are bewildered because of, because of the ignorance which covers their real knowledge. Hare Krishna. Jnana tu tat agyanam 
tiešām nāšitam ātmanā, tiešām ādītē vajšģīnām, prakašājāte tad param. Arī Krishna. When, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which innocence is destroyed, then his knowledge reveals everything. As the sun light up everything in the daytime. Hare Krishna. Tad budhaya stat atmanas, tanishta stat parayana, gachanti apunavritim, jana nirduta kalmasha. When one's intelligence, mind, faith, and refuge are fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgiving through complete knowledge and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation. Hare Krishna. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmane Gave Hastine Shunicheva Shva Pakecha Pandita Samadarshana. Hare Krishna. The humble sages, by virtue of their true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, outcast. Hare Krishna. Yehaiva te richita sarago, yesham samye satam mana, yerdosham hi samam brahma, tasmad brahma nite sata. Hare Krishna. Those whose mind are established in sameness and equanimity have already conquered the conditions of birth and death. They are flawless like Brahmana, and thus they are already situated in Brahma. Hare Krishna. Na prahrishyet priyam prapya, no dvijet prapya chapriyam, stera budhir asamudho brahmavet brahmane stata. Hare Krishna. A person who neither rejoins upon achieving something pleasant nor laminate upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self-intelligent, who is unbewildered and who knows the science of God, is already situated in transcendence. Hare Krishna. Bahya sparsheshva saktatma vinityatmani yatsukham Sabrahma Yoga Yuktatma Sukam Akshayam Ashnate. Hare Krishna. Such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense player, but is always in trance, enjoying the player within. In this way, the self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness. For he concentrates on the stream. Hare Krishna. Ye hi samparasha jab hoga nukhayonaya evate adiyantavanta takonteya nate shura mate budham. Hare Krishna. And in, as an intelligent person does not take part in the source of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such players have a beginning and an end. And so the wise man does not delight in them. Hare Krishna. Shaknoti haivaya sudhum prakshari rade mokshanat kamak prodho bhavam vekam sayukta sa sukhi nara. Hare Krishna, before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. Hare Krishna. Yo anta sukhantar aramas, the hunter jatir evaya, se yogi brahma nirvana, brahma bhoto ahigachete. Hare Krishna. One whose one whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose 
aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic he is liberated in the supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme hari krishna labhante brahmane ramanam prashaya kshina kalmasha chena dvaidha yatatmana sarva bhuta hite rata hari krishna those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts whose minds are engaged within who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings and who are free from all sins achieve liberation in the supreme hari krishna kama krodha vimuktanam yatinam yatachetasam abhito brahma nirvanam vartate vidyatatmanam hari krishna those who are free from anger and all material desires who are self realized self disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in in the supreme in a very near future hari krishna sparashan kritva bahir bahyam shakshur shaivantare hruvo pranapanau samau kritva na sabhyantara charinau yatendriya mano bhutir munir moksha parayana vigatecha bhaya krodho yaha sada mukta eva sam hari krishna shutting out all external sense objects keeping the eyes and vision con- Concentrated, concentrated between the two eyebrows, suspending the inward and outward breaths within the nostrils, and <laughs> thus controlling the mind, senses, and intelligence. The transcendentalist, aiming at liberation, becomes free from desire, fear, and anger. One who is always in this state. is certainly liberated hari krishna bhaktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram sohridam sarva bhutanam yatvamam shantim richitim hari krishna a person in full consciousness of me knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiaries of all sacrifices and austerities the supreme lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor of benefactor and well wisher of all the living entities attains peace from the pangs of material miseries hari krishna hari krishna thank you pranash prabhu anil prabhu thank you anil prabhu you gave us hari krishna of hearing hari krishna so many times today Okay, so let me share my screen again. Welcome, dear devotees, to today's um, chat session. Today we continue our reading of Chapter Five, entitled "Karma Yoga: Action in Krishna Consciousness." And today we shall recite and discuss text number fourteen. Before we do so, we'll recite the Mangala Charanam praise. Please feel free to join me behind muted mics. Om Ajnana Timilandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Malitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Pamsajeevam Sadvetam Savadutan Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्रीराधा कृष्णा पदन सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखम विधम स्था हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगापते गोपेश गोपिका कंत राधा कंत नमस्ते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुति देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय पंच कल्पा कृपा सिंधु पतिथना पावने वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधारा श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे नम विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण प्रष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदंत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चाधिशारिणे खिल प्रभुपाद की जय लोकस्याति प्रभु फल संयोगम स्वावस्तु प्रवर्तते प्रोपायतशिप न नो karmani activities lokasya of the people srijati creates prabhu the master of the city of the body na no no karma phala with the results of the activities samyogam connection swabhavaha swabhavaha the modes of material nature to but pravartate act <coughs> translation by shri prabhupad the living entity as will be explained in the 7th chapter is one of the energies or natures of the supreme lord but is distinct from matter which is another nature called inferior of the lord somehow the superior nature the living entity has been in contact with material nature since time immemorial the temporary body or material dwelling place which he obtains is the cause of varieties of activities and their resultant reactions living in such a conditional atmosphere one suffers the results of the activities of the body by identifying identifying himself in ignorance with the body it is ignorance acquired from time immemorial that is the cause of bodily suffering and distress as soon as the living entity becomes aloof from the activities of the body he becomes free from the reactions as well as long as he is in the city of the body he appears to be the master of it but actually he is neither its proprietor no control of its actions and reactions he is simply in the midst of the material ocean struggling for existence the waves of the ocean are tossing him and he has no controller control over them his best solution is to get out of the water by transcendental krishna consciousness that alone will save him from all turmoil first again the embodied spirit master 
of the city of his body does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of actions. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is giving us knowledge by which we be can become free. Free from material entanglement. In this word, uh, in this verse here, in the Purpa Prabhupada, uh, gives a nice analogy. Um, in terms of the soul, he says, he is simply in the midst of the material ocean, struggling for existence. The waves of the ocean are tossing him and he has no control over them. I'm sure many of you all or us have had experience when we swam in the ocean and the ocean was a bit rough. The waves just toss you. It just lifts you off your feet and you become churned in it. That itself is quite a harrowing experience. Sometimes you see the surface, uh, they surf these big waves, and sometimes these big waves crash over them and they get tossed like they're in the middle of a washing machine. Uh, completely just spinning, you have no control. As the waves and the water wants to take you, you simply have to go. And Prabhupada explains, this has been our situation since time immemorial. Uh, we've just been tossed by the material nature. Uh, sometimes you look at a leaf being blown by the wind. It just blows and it rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. That is our situation. Uh, completely out of control by the uh, controlling agents of the material world. So in this section here, the Lord is explaining in, in text 13, 14, and 15, that there are three types of doers. Three types of doers. Uh, does anyone know which are the three types the Lord is describing here? Which are the three types of doers? Krishna is explaining in these verses. I'll show you a diagram. Not sure. If, what did, are you seeing a diagram on the screen? No, Professor. Earlier we saw, but not now. Okay. Let me let me show you the diagram I want to show. Now you can see it? Yes, yes sir. All right. So Krishna is explaining in these three verses the three types of doers. And the Lord is saying that one who knows the three types of doers, one who is in knowledge of the three types of doers, what is the result of this knowledge? one becomes detached from the material entanglement. And when one becomes detached from the material entanglement, then one gets to understand the Supreme Lord. And then when one gets to understand the Supreme Lord, one becomes completely freed. Completely freed. It's just like, sometimes imagine we are like a bird in a cage. There is no, there is no for us to get out. But somehow or the other, if some knowledge comes, how to open the cage and to come out, uh, that is so liberating. So in the same way, Krishna is giving us the knowledge by which we can come out from being tossed with no control. So Krishna is talking about three types of doers. And in the yesterday's verse, 
happen. Uh, the Lord, text number 13. Uh, the Lord spoke about the soul. The soul. So there's the first type of doer is the soul. And Krishna explains that when the soul understands its position, and again, there's talk about the, the nine gates, which is the body. And the soul uh, desires. And the next one we're speaking about is in this verse. The second type of doer is the, the material nature and specifically the three modes of material nature. And here Krishna says something uh, quite extraordinary, the Lord says. The embodied spirit, master of the city of his body, does not create activities, nor does he induce people to act, nor does he create the fruits of activities. All of this is enacted by the modes of material nature. So we think we are doing, but no. So what, what verse does this remind one of? that we studied earlier in the earlier chapters. Anyone would like to say? It's a very famous verse and it, it practically mirrors this verse. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare my Krishna. humble obeisances. My humble obeisances. Can I try? Can I try? Please? Oh, okay. I don't know if it is uh, previous. I just remembered the verse. Uh -huh. Is a prakriti kriya manani guna karmani sarvasha ahankar vimur atma karta ahamiti manyate is done by the three modes, but the false ego is thinking that the soul is doing it. I mean, false ego is thinking I am doing it. Excellent. That's third chapter, text number 27. Prakriti kriya manani gunai karma sarvasha. Ahankara vimudatma karta ham iti manyate. Krishna says the spirit soul, bewildered by the influence of the false ego, thinks itself the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out uh, by the modes of material nature. So Again, it, it's quite amazing. You know, we think we are doing so many things. But as this diagram illustrates, uh, that actually, uh, and the next verse will talk about the super soul. These are the three doers. And if one understands this spiritual, this spiritual fact, and one can live in the world with this understanding, according to the, the Bhagavad Gita, one is liberated. So, uh, material nature has to have an activating agent. And the activating agent is the desire. Matter can't desire. Matter is inert. So the activating agent is the soul's desire. And based on the desire of the soul, material nature is doing everything. But before that, there has to be a sanction. And the sanction is by the super soul. So this is the, this is the way uh, uh, life operates. The soul desires, but the soul is a completely uh, aloof. As Krishna says earlier in the Bhagavad Gita, we were reading, what verse was that in this chapter here? Um, Krishna says uh, that the soul uh, does nothing. Um, I'm just trying to find the verse now. Yeah, Krishna says, a person in divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, breathing, huh? who always knows with himself, within himself that he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, or opening or closing his eyes, 
He always knows that only the material senses are engaged with the objects and that he is aloof from them. We are, a spirit, we are spiritual beings. We are completely aloof from material nature. But, uh, Prabhupada explains, because we have been here so long, Prabhupada uses the term time immemorial. We've been here so long, we actually start to think, I am doing. I am part of it. But as Krishna explains, we've just said now, but when one comes to divine consciousness, one can simply see how things are happening. He is simply by the modes of material nature. Now, dear devotees, this applies to the conditioned soul. When the soul becomes enlightened, when the soul is able to transcend the material nature, then the soul, the purified soul, he sees simply if all of his actions are being directed by the Lord. And the soul feels himself directly con connected at every point in time with the Lord. And those who are enlightened, if they go through different experiences, um, although they're liberated, when they go through this different experience, they still see, or oh, this is simply the results of my karma uh, or the material modes of nature. Not only for us, uh, Prabhupada writes very beautifully in one purport. When one sees a person acting in a certain way, that may often be very disturbing to us. And one thinks to himself, this person is acting in this way simply because of the influence of the modes of material nature. He is a pure spirit soul. He is aloof from this, but because he identifies with the body, he is simply acting under the modes of material nature. So how can I become angry at him? How can I become disturbed by his actions? He's simply acting like a puppet acts under the strings of the puppeteer. So this knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is giving you is very beautiful. If we can simply live in this knowledge, live in this knowledge, then certainly we become liberated. And this knowledge uh, is very, very easily attained by the practice of bhakti yoga, specifically hearing and chanting, and chanting the maha mantra. One can, one can come to the level of understanding this knowledge. In this, in this verse here, there is one. Uh, there's some nice words, words here, and. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. Where is it? Yeah, it's here. You, you must be know in the Veda base, you have this. Um, okay, so just bear with me. Uh, that we have this, this um, function, if you can click on this word, you can see what it means. Kartritvam, Kartritvam, the performance activities, being the doer, uh, being the doer. And uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's this one verse in the third canto, 26th chapter, 26th verse. This false ego is characterized as the doer as an instrument and as an effect. It is further characterized as serene, active, or dull, according to its influence by the modes of passion and ignorance. Meaning, 
the more is one in the mode of ignorance, the more one is under the influence of false ego. The more one is in passion, well, slightly less, and even under the mode of goodness, even less. But when one comes to the mode of transcendental goodness, then one becomes completely free from the hankara. And in the Purva Prabhupada beautifully says, one great acharya, Naratom Das Thakur, has lamented that when one deviates from pure consciousness or Vasudeva or Krishna consciousness, he becomes entitled in material activities. The exact words he uses are, Sat Sangha Chadi Koinu Asati Vilas Te Karane La Gila Yet Karma, pan, karma Banda Pansa. I have given up the pure status of consciousness because I wanted to enjoy in the temporary material manifestation. Therefore, I have been entangled in the network of actions and reactions. It's a beautiful verse by Hilanaratam Das Thakur. Uh, in the purport, or in this verse here, there's talk about the, the master of the city of his body. And in the verse, previous verse, Prabhupada talks about the city of the nine gates. And yesterday we read about the nine gates. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a very elaborate discussion about the city of the nine gates. Can anyone remember in which part of the Bhagavatam one can read about this? Is it for Yes. Canto 4.2721. Canto 4, starting off in chapter number 25. And the, there is a king, Prachirana Prachirana Barsat, Prachirana Barisat. Prachirana Barisat. He had um, many sons called the Prachetas. But he was very entangled. He was very entangled in performing sacrifices, specifically animal sacrifice. So Narad Muni wanted to bring him out of his material consciousness. So he, he told a story. It's called an allegory. It wasn't a true story. It's a made-up story, allegory, of King Puranjan who got caught up in the city of the nine gates and he went down and down and down and down. He became more and more and more entangled. The story of King Puranjan is very interesting. And uh, when one reads it, we think, oh, what's happening to King Puranjan? But actually this is the story of our life. It's the story of how uh, we've been entangled in in material life for so long. So uh, I'll stop here. And before I take questions, I have an important announcement. We all know tomorrow is a very special day. It is Mokshada Ekadasi, and it is also Gita Jayanti. Tomorrow was the day that the Lord spoke Bhagavad Gita. And uh, it is a most auspicious day. So how do we celebrate Gita Jayanti? Srila uh, Prabhupada taught us and the Acharyas have taught us the best way to observe Gita Jayanti, the best way to celebrate Gita Jayanti is twofold. One is we recite, we absorb ourselves in the words of the Bhagavad Gita, and we feel a deep, deep sense of gratitude to the Lord for making this, this transcendental, this beautiful knowledge accessible to us. And then with, secondly, we go out and we distribute this knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. And the Lord ends the Bhagavad Gita where he says, there is no one more dear to me than one who explains this Bhagavad Gita to other people. So in keeping with this, um, this 
team. Tomorrow morning at half past eight, Sutta Prabhu is going to recite uh, one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. And then after he, he recites, he's going to tell us how we can all become engaged in distributing Bhagavad Gita tomorrow. And whatever our situation, it will become possible. So dear devotees, uh, I'm going to post in our WhatsApp group the link and the details by which we can join tomorrow's call at half past eight. Uh, we can jointly, uh, together with such a pure, elevated soul like Sutapa Prabhu, we can, we can recite the Bhagavad Gita. And then we can all come together. Uh, the devotees have a goal to distribute 1,008 Bhagavad Gitas tomorrow on Gita Jayanti. And there'll be nothing more pleasing to the Lord. And when the Lord becomes pleased, he will reveal the inner secrets, the inner secrets of this Bhagavad Gita. And the more we understand this Bhagavad Gita, the more we become free from karma bandha, entanglement of material reactions of our material activities. The more we become free from karma phala. Phala means fruit. And karma means actions or activities. The more we will become free from feeling that the fruit of our actions are for our enjoyment. Uh, our reactions of work kept, have kept us bound to this material world for unlimited lifetimes. And uh, by the mercy of the Lord and, and Guru, we can become free. So uh, let us take advantage of tomorrow's wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, become involved in reciting and distributing. So there is uh, one comment, or is it a question from Surah Mataji? Pranam. On the topic of not getting angry, you just explained. Considering them as a spirit soul, what about terrorists, murderers, abusers, etc.? Are we not supposed to get angry on them? We can understand and maybe forgive other people personally offending us. But what about above other groups? Thank you once again for a knowledgeable session. Thank you, Surabhi, for your question. Actually, there was an incident. When Srila Prabhupada was in Delhi, he was had the Delhi Pandal. And an American uh, hippie who was traveling through India met the devotees and he joined. And he became somewhat attracted to Krishna consciousness. So after one program, he was meeting with Srila Prabhupada and very enthusiastically to the Prabhupada. Yes, let's, let's distribute Bhagavad Gita. Let's talk about Bhagavad Gita and just eliminate anger from this world. And Prabhupada said, what do you mean? What's wrong with anger? He said, though, Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita simply to make Arjuna angry. Hanuman became angry. There is nothing wrong with anger. There is nothing wrong with anger. So, Surabhi Mataji, in Krishna consciousness, there's nothing that's taboo. Even there's a place for anger. It doesn't mean that the devotee is a pacifist. Krishna himself was not advocating in the Bhagavad Gita for one to become a pacifist. There is a place for everything, even anger in Krishna consciousness. There's two types of anger. There is one anger that arises from the material mode of passion and ignorance, modes of passion and ignorance. And then there's one type of anger that arises even from the transcendental stage. What is the highest highest symptom of anger that was ever displayed 
it was Lord Narsingadev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. He became extremely angry, so angry that even the demigods were afraid to approach him. But Lord Narsingadev was not becoming angry out of the modes of nature. He can never, he's the Lord. He was on the platform of transcendental anger. So there's two types of anger. Uh, anger can be used in Krishna's service. It can arise from the transcendental platform, or there's anger that comes out from the, rises from the material modes. The one that comes out from the material modes is not good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So there's another question. How can we say the soul is not doing anything if he is desiring? Um, yes, uh, there's two ways. He's not, he's not doing anything in that the soul in one sense is aloof. Uh, but you can say, therefore, in this verse, it is, in these three verses, it says there's three types of doers. The soul, the super soul, and material nature. Uh, this is what Krishna is saying. The soul is the doer in terms of it is desire activates. The super soul is the doer in terms of its sanctioning. And the material nature, the material mode is a doer in that it is making everything happen. So in one sense, you are right, Mataji. These verses are not necessarily saying the soul is not doing anything, but you have to look at it in the context of what the Lord is saying here. It's, it's really, the only thing it's doing is desiring. Everything else is simply happening by the modes of material nature. So the next point. Sorry, what's Gita Jayanti? Is it glorifying Gita? Only this Gita or the Gitas too? Gita Jayanti is the day that the Bhagavad Gita was spoken approximately 5,000 years ago on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So we are talking about that event. We're celebrating that event. The most recent, Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he spoke the same Gita Many millions ago, years ago, to the sun god, Vivasvan, Vivasvan. So now we're talking about the Gita Jayanti where Krishna spoke to Arjuna. There's another point here. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavar Pranams. If one reads the Bhagavad Gita very sincerely and with all seriousness, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of his past misdeeds will not act, act upon him. Taken from Gita Mahatmya 2. Thank you for sharing that, Santosh Mataji. Very beautiful uh, extract from the Gita Mahatmya. Surabhi says thank you. Thank you, Surabhi, for your question. Okay, I understand. Any other questions, comments, reflections, corrections anyone has? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I, rem Hare Krishna. I remember a verse that we were doing, you know, in later in the chapters, obviously it's later. So I don't know which chapter, seven chapters, something where it says there are five kinds of doers mm -hmm. and the material body, Chetra, Chetra, Gil, soul, and ultimately the super soul. I remember. Yes. That's it. So, yeah. So there are again five. Uh, uh, and I think that the soul is powering the body. Obviously, if the soul is not there, the body is dead. And also, the if Krishna didn't give the three modes of material nature, none of our work would have been done. So, you know, uh, when because of the desire we are here, desire to enjoy separately from Krishna, we are in the material world. And then Krishna has given the means how to, you know, enjoy or suffer in the material world. So, through three modes of material nature, only work is done. So everything is the superior energy of Krishna is the soul and the inferior energy of Krishna is the three modes. So we are completely, even if we see logically, we are totally, you know, we are nothing actually. The soul is nothing. Everything is given by Krishna to be done in the world. So I was thinking of that. Right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for that. It's like you have a material desire a switch goes on, it activates the material modes. Yes. And then the material modes forces us to act in a certain way, you know, according to whatever mode we're situated. But when we desire to serve Krishna, 
that switch that activates the material mode doesn't go on. It's not activated because we are now desiring in our actual constitutional position. Then what comes into play? Krishna's superior energy, the bhakti shakti. So all we have to do in one sense to become free from the material entanglement is to change our desire. All we have to do is change our desire. And that is what the process of Krishna consciousness is about. Changing our desire from desiring materially to now desiring spiritually. And the moment we come to the point, like we go through phases. At the beginning, it's lots of material desires, spiritual desires are less. As we practice the process of bhakti yoga, the spiritual desires increase and the material desires decrease. So there's still some action of the material modes of nature because it's, it's still activated by our material desires. Then we reach a stage where our desires become completely purified. We only desire spiritually. And then no touching, switching the button of material modes. It's completely over. We're completely in the spiritual realm. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Wonderful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, okay. Any other comments, dear devotees? So please, I'm going to put the link. Don't forget to join tomorrow, half past eight. Recite one chapter together with Sutapa Prabhu and then inspire each other to distribute Bhagavad Gita. And there'll be no better way off of celebrating Gita Jayanti. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna Prabhuji. Sorry, can I ask just one thing, Prabhuji? Yes. Sorry, thank you. Prabhuji, I just happened to be reading Puranjana's uh, allegory this afternoon, and mm -hmm. I was on the bit where Narad Muni is clarifying the allegory to Prachina Bari. Yes. And there was one thing that really confused me and kind of I was just wanted to clarify that. It says, uh -huh. when a living entity wants to enjoy the modes of material nature in their totality, he prefers out of many bodily forms to accept the body of the nine gates. So do we have that preference? Because I thought it was based on our karma that we're given the body of a human or any other being. Why is it saying that we, we choose to become a human being? It seems like, thus he prefers to become a human being or a demigod. What verse is that? What chapter, Mataji? Uh, that is uh, 4.29. Uh, words five, text five. Four twenty nine, text five. Let me just see. Um, so it's four twenty nine, text number five. Yes. Okay. So Narada explains the different characteristics of the allegory. Uh, Puranjana, the city, Avijnata, the nine gates of the city, and then five is Puranjani. The material intelligence, is that the one? Uh, no, 4.29, uh, text um, text 5, text 4, sorry, Prabhuji, it's text 4. Okay, text four. nine gates of the city, body with nine of them. When the jiva wants to enjoy, he considers a human or demigod body to be the best. Yeah, so do we have that choice? I thought it was based on our karma that we given a body. Well, we understand we get the body according to two, two, uh, two factors. One is our karma and one is our desire. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, we see these pictures of people desiring to eat a lot of food and those want to drink blood, gets the body of a tiger. So we get the body according to our karma and our desires. As Krishna says, whatever one thinks of at the time of death, that state we attain without fail. Yes. So our desires determine what body. So in one sense, we yes, we are in control of our desires. So we have the choice. Okay. Wow. Our karma and our desires determine the next body. So what karma is definitely there. Karma is there. Also the desire, as Krishna says, you know, whatever one desires, to that state one will attain without fail. 
So we're not expressing our preference, but through our karma, we are actually saying this is the kind of body we would like next time. Karma and desire. Desire as well. A combination of both, karma and desire. But right. Prabhuji, Puranjana Prabhu had, uh, Puranjana Maharaj, you know, the king, he had the body of a woman and that wife he became was a good woman and he had even though he had such bad karma how did she become good because because she had a good husband yes yeah that's, that's, that's what that's what the bhagavatam says he yeah. was so attached to his wife he became a woman in his next life but by the by the good activities of the husband then uh, he got some benefit that means he didn't carry the bad karma with him, did he? Well, he carried, it's a bit of both. One was the desire, becoming too attached to his wife, in the body of a woman. And then, uh, yeah, the karma, he got, I don't know, he had some good karma to get a good husband. <laughs> I don't Thank know. you, Brahmaji. Thank you. Thank so you, Brahmaji. All right. So... Thank you, devotees, for your attendance and your lovely questions. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow, half past eight in the morning. <coughs> and all fired up to distribute Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. If you want to stay on, we can talk about. Yes, Prabhuji, I am on. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, if those want to stay behind, we're going to talk about how to do book distribution door to door. Thank you, Prabhuji, for your time. I really appreciate it, Prabhuji. No problem. So, a few things back, Namrata Mataji. So, you've got books to distribute? Uh, Prabhuji, I'm <laughs> no, I haven't yet, but I'm ordering it online tomorrow. You're ordering it online tomorrow? Yes, okay. Prabhuji. I just thought it's an auspicious day to order tomorrow because it's Gita Jayanti. So I'm going to order online tomorrow. Okay. All right. Or you can just speak to Devi and Prabhu and he'll arrange for it. Whatever. Yes, Prabhuji, he did. So Prabhuji, I had a couple of questions, to be honest, because yes. I, one is I want to do door to door. I don't know if I'm getting over ambitious, but uh, one is I want to do door to door. So I will order the 25 books of Gita set. Uh, by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I want to start with 25 Prabhuji and then see how it goes. The second mm -hmm. thing Prabhuji I wanted to ask was um, I asked Divyanam Prabhu a couple of days back and he did mention because I said to him I said I'm happy to donate some money as well and mm -hmm. he said to me that Northwick Park Hospital needed some 150 books. Now I'm not sure if that is still the case or not Prabhuji. But for that, I wanted to, I was going to ask, you know, like uh, my family members, my friends, everybody, if they want to even chip in, you know, two pounds or three pounds or five pounds, whatever they feel like, Prabhuji. And then together we can contribute for, um, um, for uh, you know, sponsoring it. The only, um, that, that was the second idea I had, Prabhuji. And then obviously I was going to, like I said, Prabhuji, I get a bit over ambitious. But then if I'm over ambitious and out of three at least I'll definitely do two right Prabhuji mm -hmm. um, and the third thing Prabhuji was the was the dharma pack Prabhuji because what, what I want from you Prabhuji is before you explain me how to do it is on the dharma pack Prabhuji I want to send that out to again to my friends to my colleagues and work people everybody and say this is the dharma pack you can buy it for yourself or you can also sponsor it so Prabhuji, I want to understand from you, which is the buying link? Because I went on the idea seeds and I'm probably a little bit lost on that, Prabhuji, because maybe because I haven't done it before. And which is also the sponsor link, because both are different, isn't it, Prabhuji? That's true. That's true. Um, we were speaking to Yogi Prabhu to, to, to uh, well, the, the buying link is there on the idea seeds. I can send you that. And I'll okay, put, I'll put it in all in one space. Okay, I'll, Prabhuji. I'll even give you maybe a suggested wording to you can put out. That is the that is very good. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. That's exactly what I need. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. So, so one, you will give me um, buying link so people can buy it for themselves. Yes. 
and then you would also give me a bit of uh, what to write how to explain yeah the second thing probably you're going to give me the link where i can go and sponsor for you know accumulating the money and i can sponsor so if i don't know how that works probably so i just wanted to understand that a bit okay this is for the for the hospitals in particular i mean i i don't mind probably that was one of the things that divinam prabhuji said because i asked that is is there anywhere that i can sponsor the books and he said well some devotee was looking for 150 books for northwick park hospital now if that is still the case i would love to prabhuji because I have got some connection to that hospital because my father-in-law used to go there, et cetera, et cetera. So I would love to do that, yes. Okay, okay. So there's a couple of things. Firstly is the Dharma pack, right? We just talking yes. about. I need to share with you if they want to uh, to buy and then one that yes. they want to sponsor. The second yes. thing we want to know is how to sponsor a set of books. I think of maybe 150 books. Yep. That basically will be a link. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alternatively, um, you know, we can by card or you can even do bank deposit. So there's three ways. I'll send you all three ways how you can do it. Okay, Prabhuji. But, but the main thing is to know that we allocate that that contribution towards the uh, sponsorship of books. But that I will discuss with Divina Prabhu how we can earmark that. Okay. Make sure Prabhuji, that would help. If you want to go it in, in someone's name, then you just let us know. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji, that would help. And Prabhuji, would I know? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm asking too much, but Prabhuji, if I am sponsoring the entire Gita for the hospital, then I, you know, I wouldn't mind um, just doing it myself. But if I have my family doing it as well, Prabhuji would, you know, whenever we sponsor or distribute, would somebody take a picture that this is where it's gone on the hospital, just like a, so I can send these people something back and say, guys, this is where your money has gone and this is where the books have gone sort of thing Prabhuji. okay that with me and i know exactly what you're saying when people see how their sponsorship has gone they see the joy it brings to people absolutely Prabhuji. firstly they feel they, they feel they feel good and it also will inspire them to give more in the future absolutely Prabhuji. yes that that's the point yes okay. leave, leave that part of me I'll, I'll come back to you i just need to okay understand how we're doing this is we're doing this through, through the Gita project that we're doing it through the chaplaincy service okay Prabhuji how do we have permission to give the different patients I just need to find out from Vivian exactly what what what's happening there yes Prabhuji yeah and Prabhuji even if if it's I don't know if it's 100 books or 150 books uh, what would be like for example are we looking for 500 pounds or 250 would you just give me a range for the, 100 books, 150 books, just so that I know that how I go with everybody and then uh, whatever is left, I can just donate all that myself. Sure. I'll come Thank back you. to that one. Thank you, Prabhuji. Um, now is the door to door, Prabhuji. This is the one I am a little bit, uh, a little bit scared about. I'm not going to lie, Prabhuji, because yeah. I was talking to my brother who does who's been in in krishna consciousness for years and he goes to me that um close the door if you want he, he goes to me that um sorry Prabhuji, he goes to me that it's very nice that you you do it by donating your money but why don't you try going door to door and i'm like okay so, okay, so who told you this my brother my brother in india very good he's a devotee oh yes Prabhuji. yes yes yeah 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 yes Prabhuji. okay yeah. he's the one that yeah, says yeah. and the beads yeah yeah exactly Prabhuji yes he's been into it for for for, yeah. for, a, for a long time as well Prabhuji so yes um so he Prabhuji is, um, he told me I have to go door to door so I'm like he's a bit he, he knows I'm very challenging and ambitious he's like I challenge you go and I'm like oh my god I guess Prabhuji yeah, that's just where I need I am scared I'm not going to lie going to door to doors where they're all the the, uh, the white people surround us how 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 do I do it Prabhuji okay okay uh so the first thing is, uh, there's something very special about going door to door or even on the streets. And what's so special about it, it takes you out of your comfort zone. It challenges the ego. And, um, you know, His Holiness Shivaram Swami was recently saying, you won't find Krishna in your comfort zone. Krishna is to be found outside your comfort zone. So from that aspect doing door-to-door -door standing in the street is very purifying 
And uh, there's a few things that you need to take into cognizance. Firstly, what are the obstacles? Uh, the first the first and the foremost one is our, the fear, isn't it? Yes, probably. Uh, fear of what? Uh, the, the, it's the fear of rejection. It's the fear of maybe being looked down upon. Hmm? Yeah. It's the fear of getting our, our ego uh, dented. Uh, but we know, um, I'm talking about a psychology now. <laughs> It, it, to grow, we have to make ourselves vulnerable. Uh, and uh, being vulnerable means uh, dealing with, with the shame. Uh, and, and this is all to do with our false ego. So uh, you have to have realistic expectations, Mataji. Uh, and I'll, tell, I'll come back to what you can do and how you can say, and we'll do a bit of maybe role playing. Uh, the first thing is, it's just a simple fact that of every 10 people you approach, at least four are gonna give you a definitive no. Yeah. So just go, when you go out, have no expectations. Uh, and see it like an adventure. You know, If Krishna wants, chooses to use you as an instrument, he's got a plan for someone out there who has got some degree of sincerity. And uh, don't see it like you are selling. Uh, don't, don't picture yourself as a salesperson. Picture yourself as a giver of transcendental knowledge. Yeah. So the mindset and the consciousness of how we go out is extremely important. Yeah. One is in terms of expectations, one in terms of who we are, uh, and, uh, and just see it as an adventure. So imagine you're going now and um, you're knocking on someone's house. It's, it's quite a nice house. They probably, you do not know who's behind the door. It could be an elderly English couple who have no idea of Vedic culture and Vedic knowledge. So you knock on the door and they open. So what do you say? <laughs> hello how are you doing yeah good evening how are you doing <laughs> yeah I take it you're well and normally our starting line is uh, i am from the yoga center uh -huh. in lechmore heat i'm not sure if you heard of bhaktivedanta manor it's the property that's been donated to us by the beatles george harrison so the moment you say george harrison something that resonates with them it'll feel some level of connection, right? From the Beatles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are from the yoga and spiritual center. And it is our tradition during the month of December uh, to make a special effort to give. And in our tradition, the greatest gift we can offer anybody is the gift of uh, spiritual knowledge. Okay. And uh, normally what I'll do is I'll say, you know, we have uh, various literature here. They contain wisdom uh, uh, from the ancient wisdom books from the East and India. And uh, what I do then I open up, I have this page ready. I have, a, I have this uh, bookmark. And I said, let me just share with you something that will give you some insight into what this knowledge is about. And I say, um, so there's a picture here, and it says a, a picture paints a thousand words, right? And you say, you, yes. you, you, we have a picture, and this tells us, this picture tells the story of our life. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So at some stage, you were here, and maybe you are here now. I am probably here. Uh, and the body is going as transformed in a very significant way. But we know that although the body has changed completely every seven years, every cell in the body changes, I still perceive myself as the same person. So, and then it shows also the body may perish, the body may die, but the soul lives on 
eternally. And this book teaches us that we are not the body, we are the soul. And that is a complete paradigm shift. Uh, it's a complete paradigm. So you can show them some pictures and you can mm -hmm. do it in this picture here. Yeah. It's so useful. Uh, it shows how in every living being there is a soul and the soul is equal. And then maybe you can connect it with some of the things that's going on in the world at the moment. But you've got to keep it brief. Uh, you've got to keep it brief because people's attention span is very low. Ultimately, Namrata Mataji, Prabhupada said that within each of us is a genius. <laughs> and that genius is obviously the individual soul, but the bigger genius is Krishna. And if we simply see ourselves and we pray to Krishna before we go, Krishna, please, I don't know what is going to resonate with this person, but please help me to say the right thing that will, will convince them to take a book. And then what happens is the first door is probably the most difficult one. It is, Prabhuji. <laughs> but and it's possible you'll get a rejection there. I should go to a first door with my friend's door, Prabhuji. <laughs> Start with positive and then everything is positive. Sorry, Prabhuji. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, we went out on, on Friday evening. I tell you, we must have knocked like, I don't know, 10, 11 doors before we mm -hmm. got to to even hear what we were. And then, then he tells us, oh, so you're the new Jehovah Witness. And I said, yeah, maybe, maybe. But he took a Bhagavad Gita from us. Oh, brilliant, Prabhuji. Haribo. <laughs> so you must just be jolly. Just, just be jolly and you, you get rejected. So, oh, okay, Krishna, you know, you didn't, you didn't have a plan for him. Then you go to the next one and from the window, they'll say, yes, what do you want? Oh, I'm from the yoga center in Watford. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good day. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, and just be happy, you know, just be happy. You go to the next door and then the dog will bark and then the owner will come and hold the dog. And uh, <laughs> that happened to us twice on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, just... Uh, Vaishya Shikha Prabhu said, they'll say, oh, no, uh, I'm an atheist. They say, oh, an atheist. Actually, we have an atheist book. Uh, we have a book for atheists. And you pull out one of the books like Veda or something and say, yeah, this is for you. And then you, the difficult part is now asking for money. All right. So what we have to do is, so you'll say, okay, you, they convince and they're interested. But before they say anything else, uh, they say, actually, we don't charge for these books. Hmm? One cannot put a price to such, such uh, uh, beneficial knowledge. Yep. But um, it's an ancient tradition. When you give something in exchange for spiritual knowledge, it connects you with that knowledge and the teachers in a deeper way. There's a word called Dakshina. We have a word called Dakshina. Dakshina means giving something in reciprocation. We said, you say, we're not after the money. But if you like to give something, uh, it will connect you deeply with the, more deeply with the knowledge. And secondly, it will also help us to give more of these books. We are a charity. We're not for profit. We're not after the money. We simply want to distribute this knowledge. And then the person say, oh, okay. Um, how, you know, carry some change with you. They may give you, sometimes they'll give you five pounds, 10 pounds, even 20 pounds. They may give you. Sometimes they'll say, oh, I've got, I don't think I've got cash on me. Then you say, okay, whatever. Have you got some coins? I'm sure you must be know where you got some coins. You're not after the money. You just, it's the principle is of, of them giving something. Uh, and if the book is, is really, really eager to take the book, uh, what we do sometimes is we see there's a spark and they really they can't find the money. You don't have a card reader. We carry the card reader so we can take payment by, by card. They just tap the card and, you know, door to door but you may not have that, that facility. So you can say, okay, um, if you like, um, yes, uh, I'll give you a little, uh, a, um, I'll give you a copy of the text, pay by text. Huh? You can say, I'll, I can send you this. And if you want, and you like to, you can also pay by text and you can mm -hmm. send them that. And, uh, and if they say, okay, thank you very much. They can either take the book or they'll say, not today, some other time. And then you can say, thank you very much. 
you know, you've given me some time. I really appreciate it. And even if they, they disagree with you, you know, go to someone else and say, you know what, I don't like Hare Krishnas. They only have the money, They're always bothering people on the state on the streets. You can say, I'm I'm really, I'm really sorry you feel that way. But I do respect, I do respect your your feelings. And I hope that someday hopefully you will change because I've had a different experience and leave it at that. So you'll meet all sides of people, young, old, different nationalities, different religions. Uh, just present the knowledge as you know it, Namrata Mataji. Depend on Krishna, be jolly, be enthusiastic. And you know, you will definitely, you may get 10 rejections, but you will meet this one soul that will make it all worth it. Thank you, Prabhuji. That was very kind. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Make it all worth it. Yeah. Thank you. Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. <laughs> I'll wait for your message, Prabhuji, and I will order the books tomorrow for at least the, the one that I want to do door to door, Prabhuji. All right. If I can serve in any other way, then let, let me know. Hari Bol, thank you, thank Prabhuji. There's Have a lot of devotees stayed back also to listen. Anyone else has got any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I just have probably one thing to add. Um, very small point though. Uh, people would generally think, you know, when we say we come from a spiritual center, I mean, sorry, I, I don't mean to uh, repeat your sentences, but generally when we say we come from a temple, etc., they're least interested and they just want us to go away. They think that we are volunteers or, you know, we are just doing this small job because we didn't get anything else to do. We are jobless, etc. Uh, so we can also say that we do come from a reputed and a standard family or from a profession, but then we're just doing this out of our passion and interest because these books really changed me. And I'm like really being happy in life and in my life. And this has added a lot, lot, lot of value. And I've done this to my family and my friends and they're very happy as well. So just as a gift that I want to give these books away to others as well so that they can find the happiness in their lives. And that is the, you know... Um, I don't know what to call that. that. That is why I want to do this volunteering thing to distribute these books. So I hope, hopefully that might add some value. I don't know. Yeah, you can say I'm, I'm a volunteer at the yoga center from Watford. And, uh, you know, I, I do this volunteering work because I, uh, although I have a job and, you know, whatever you want to say, you don't really need to validate, but if you feel that will help them take the book, you can. You can say, you know, I I'm just doing this as a voluntary service in my spare time because it means so much. It means so much to me, and it's made such a difference to my life and other people that are close to me. Yeah, no, understood. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Okay. Anyone else has got any comments or questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I went for my first book distribution door to door on Saturday. Dai. I was so excited. I was I was excited like a little girl. I don't know why. I got lots of rejection, but that was good for my false ego. <laughs> so when I did it, I wanted to do it. I, I just wanted it. And then I was feeling like, you know, it was raining and it was very cold. I was I was getting a headache because it was dark and cold but I was thinking how Prabhupada did it you know how yeah. Prabhupada went to absolutely cold America nobody no money nothing and I was feeling like that and I was thinking wow how he did it my god <laughs> so it was, yeah, yeah. Feeling we went out on Friday and we also had a lot of rejections and we did a few books but we had quite a few rejections I don't know that night I had the best sweetest dreams I've had in a long time you know it was just I don't know <laughs> It reciprocates with us. It was so, so spiritual. My dreams are, I got up with such a happy mood, you know. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so nice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, another question that I have. Um, we come across some people, you know, who are, who seem to be interested in the books. It may be genuine that they do not have cash. Yes. Uh, so what do we do in such scenarios? There's a few things you can do. Uh, one is you can leave a contact with them. Just say, okay, I'm happy to give this book, but you know, it's an ancient tradition that by giving in return, you will, you will connect more. And also 
you will have more appreciation because gratitude, you've given something, it increases your gratitude. And gratitude is the condition of the heart in which bhakti grows. So you can say, um, like, I don't know if you saw in the forum the other day, or Sanketan Forever Forum, when devotees knocked on the lady's door, she was so nice. She was just about to rush off to the house and she said, I don't have cash. She said, can you please leave your address with me? I'll, I'll come and I'll give you the money. So the devotees left the address and they didn't think much of it because she was so sincere. The main thing is she got the book she'll read. And after they finished going sank it and they opened the post box, in it was a beautiful note from the lady saying, thank you for making the time and doing this charity work. I looked at your books. They are so beautiful. I'm into mindfulness. I will certainly read it. And here is a donation for me. So you can you can do that. Uh, give leave something forwarding. You can leave a text address. And there's some devotees where they, if they're really genuine and they're destitute, you know, whatever you whatever is of value to you, you you give that in reciprocation. You know, but the main thing is, if they give, uh, they get benefit. We want the souls to get as much benefit as possible. But if they're really sincere, I've given up many books. If I saw the person genuinely sincere, and that same person would, in the future, when they meet a devotee, they will give again. So everything will come. You don't have to worry much about the money. Don't worry about the money. It's okay to give it for free sometimes. Uh, Prabhupada was not so much in favor of giving it for free because he said they made a lot of people throw it in the bin. But if they see that genuine spark mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but if they are just for the sake of saying that you distributed the book, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. You need to use your judgment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I'll share one experience very quickly, if that's okay, Prabhuji. Yeah. Um, when I was speaking to my brother and I said, uh, uh, and he was he was saying to me, you can do this, Namrata, go for it. And he gave me one example, Prabhuji, when him and my bhabhi went in India to one of the one of the flats and um, the, 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 the person opened the door and started shouting at my brother saying, who the hell are you? Do you know who I am? How did the, um, they've got, in India, they call them watchmen. How did the watchmen even let you in? I'm going to throw you out from here. And my brother goes, okay, that's fine. You know, I, I'm, thank you for your time. And that's okay. I will go now. And I, I, I mean, th that is something that, that rejection is something that would really hurt me, Prabhuji, when somebody would start shouting at you. And he was just explaining to me that it's okay, that soul is not ready, it's perfectly fine. And you know how it is in India, right? I don't, people would do that here, they would just politely say, I'm not interested, and then shut the door sort of thing. But that made me think, okay, <laughs> I'm sure that will not happen here, Prabhuji, right? Oh, I can tell you one or two stories, but I won't, it may frighten you away. But okay. uh, generally, generally, no. I've only had one, one really bad experience, but that that was purifying also. Sure, thank you, Prabhuji Hari Hare Krishna. All right, dear devotees, thank you very much, Madan Mohan. Prabhu, you stayed behind. Thank you very much, Rupa Mataji Geta. Thank you for your association. Thank you, Prabhuji Hari Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.